Off the coast of the western United States, both whales and ships are highly abundant. And where whales and ships overlap, there is an increased risk of ship strikes that can cause serious injury or death to whales. This is the Thank You Ocean Report. In the fall of 2007, we had four blue whale carcasses wash up on the Santa Barbara and Ventura County coastlines that were determined to have been hit by large ships. These are the container ships that come over from Asia and move up and down the California coastline. And it really cued us into a much larger problem. And that larger problem, according to Sean Hastings, the Resource Protection Coordinator for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, is the observation that when a whale is struck by a ship, it may just sink or drift away and never be found. For every whale we find, to have been ship struck, very likely there could be five and, and upwards of 10 times the number of whales being hit by ships and simply going undetected. Even small numbers of whales being killed by ships is a problem because there are only small numbers of whales left. And after centuries of the hunting of whales, many populations of whales, including blues and fin and humpback whales, were reduced to a fraction of their global populations. For example, along the western United States, there is estimated to be about 2,000 blue whales, which represents 20% of the estimated world population of 10,000 blue whales. Put that in perspective with a historic high before commercial whaling started, estimated to be over 250,000 blue whales. So we are facing a situation with a species that is listed as endangered, is at risk of going extinct, and with only 2,000 whales along the Pacific coast, every whale counts. For the last 20 years, during the summer months and often extending into the fall, there has been a return of blue whales and humpback whales to the nearshore waters, and specifically into the California National Marine Sanctuaries. And the whales are coming to feed on krill and also small fish like sardines and anchovies. The humpback whales feed on both species, and the blue and, and fin whales focus on krill. While this has been a boon for the whale watch industry and for the public to enjoy these great whales, unfortunately, much of the food that the whales are pursuing are found in the shipping lanes that span between the port of LA and Long Beach and the ports of San Francisco and Oakland. And where you have whales feeding and ships transiting is where a risk of ship strikes occur. In addition, Sean tells me that whale population studies are providing additional insight. For example, humpback whales appear to be increasing at an expected rate of 5 to 7 percent per year, but that rate of growth is not being observed with blue whales. And because they're no longer commercially hunted, the only other major human cause impact on the animals is likely ship strikes. And this is an area where NOAA has spent the last five years working with the shipping industry, researchers, National Marine Sanctuary Advisory Councils, all focused on developing a suite of recommendations aimed at reducing the risk of ship strikes. So we have been working to apply these policy ideas of moving ships and slowing ships down researching the ship and whale behaviors, and conducting outreach to the industry to raise awareness on the situation. The best way to reduce the risk of whales being hit by ships is to try and separate the whales from the ships. So NOAA has been working with the agency that governs shipping worldwide, the International Maritime Organization. And we've had some recent success that we're very excited about, and that is to slightly adjust the shipping lanes off the coast of California to separate the ship traffic from areas of high density of whales. And this is something that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has been successful in doing. And within the next year, we're all going to see the shipping lanes adjust. The second objective is to try and slow the ships down. That's been more challenging. We have been asking ships to slow down off the California coast for five years in the Santa Barbara Channel and on a voluntary basis. And we've seen very little response. In fact, less than 1% of the shipping traffic that we've been monitoring has slowed down off the coast. Sean says this isn't surprising since from the shipping industry's perspective, time is money. So creative ideas are emerging, which will encourage the ships to slow down when they are in whale sensitive areas. The California Air Resources Board is holding an auction to trade pollution credits between large industrial sources of pollution. 
This auction will generate a billion dollars a year, which has to be used to further reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Ships burning fuel create a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. And what we are proposing is that California invest some of its cap and trade auction funds to incentivize ships to slow down off the California coast. Not only will this help improve the climate effects of greenhouse gas emissions and thus public health, but slower ships are safer ships for whales. It is believed this program will reward ships for slowing down with the added benefit of a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. This is obviously a complex and ongoing issue, so we encourage you to visit our website, thankyouocean.org, for updates as they become available. My thanks to Sean Hastings with the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary. And please remember, the ocean takes care of us. Let's return the favor. To learn more, visit thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.